some things that we like body language body language in other words you know if the teacher is standing there like this you know looking really angry and mean and things um, that t that sends a message to students but if you don't see that you don't know that you know she wants you to sit down and be quiet and so on um, unless she tells you then uh, similarly, you know, <laughs> eye contact and smiles and all the ways that we, that, and tone of voice, all the ways that we convey emotion may be really hard for these individuals to comprehend and pick up. Um, along with that, because, you know, again, adjusting to a new situation can be very scary because all of a sudden they can't necessarily generalize from another school setting that they were in and now they go to a new one and all the things that they learned about getting around um, and that were familiar to them, nothing is familiar and that experience doesn't seem to translate very well. So they have to start all over again. And they're likely to be anxious and scared and uh, various various things like that. Um, perspective taking, in other words, uh, you know, well, I can imagine why Angela didn't want to talk very much today because her, uh, her mom and dad went away on a trip and she probably misses them, so she's just sort of, you know, instead of that, Angela didn't talk to me. I mean, what, what's, with, you know, not necessarily able to try to, not that, the, not that the individual can't understand feelings, but that perspective of, well, you know, <clears throat> this person is going through a hard time, and so therefore that's why, you know, she's not very responsive to me, can be really difficult. Uh, problem solving is difficult because, um, because, Planning and prioritizing uh, and organizing is all part of executive skills. And if your executive skills are weak, then problem solving is a huge issue. Um, and then these, um, these children also get, are very sensitive to rejection because their social skills aren't necessarily the greatest and so they can appear weird to some kids and be rejected and so on. And they are targets for bullies a lot of the time as well. So, um, you know, facial expressions, literal translations, they're very, they tend to be very concrete. Um, so, um, you know, and in terms of the nonverbal information processing, um, I sometimes in the past when I've done workshops that are longer and more, and more depth and so on, one activity I like to have people do just to fully appreciate the power of nonverbal communication is, um, is to say, these crackers are making me thirsty in all these different, with all these different kind of backgrounds. For example, if you were going to pick sadness, would anyone like to try that? <laughs> These crackers are making me thirsty. Or, love. These crackers are making me thirsty. You know, or, surprise. These crackers are making me thirsty. You know, and so on. Uh, there's a, a hun hundreds of ways that we communicate to others through uh, through our tone of voice, our body language, and so on. Mm -hmm. And these are the things that are not real clear often to um, individuals who have nonverbal learning disabilities. Now, strengths are that they often can memorize things really well. Um, they can oftentimes, their auditory channels are stronger because partly because the visual spatial is not so strong so 
when one sensory motor or one sensory uh, channel is weak, often another one will pick up the slack. Um, they, <clears throat> you know, are often their verbal language can be very good and oftentimes good vocabulary and they often know a lot of stuff about certain things. Um, and they're a very logical, sequential thinker, which is a nice change if you're dealing with somebody with ADHD who is often, you know, off topic in a million places all the time. Um, though, <clears throat> so, uh, we've talked about challenges. Um, now, you know, if you take a student 11 to 14 or, you know, basically expand that, you know, a few years on either side, these are oftentimes students if they don't have good environments and, and, and reasonable um, supervision and intervention and so on, they're targets for bullies. They can be teased. They tend to be very literal and concrete and concrete. So um, they often are misunderstood by everybody. Um, you know, I, we have a student here who, uh, who transitioned to another school, and uh, she, <laughs> she was in a, a, a you know, literature class or something, and the teacher asked her to draw a conclusion for, on something she read. So she literally drew a picture, you know, because it said draw a conclusion. So, why not, you know? Um, and these are the kinds of things that, um, that you'll see. Um, oftentimes, <coughs> finding the locker is a really hard thing. Lockers are hard for different, for, for students with different issues for various reasons. People with dyslexia, you know, can't remember the numbers and they're not good with directions, so they oftentimes go years without getting into their lockers. And, um, uh, people in, you know, students with N N NVLD just may not remember where they are, you know, and so um, they're, you know, these, these various things can lead to secondary, um, you know, secondary effects, mood disorders, depression, anxiety, um, and as the content gets, <coughs> the school gets more uh, complex, things, uh, information that they're expected to interpret through analogies, through, um, you know, multiple meanings, uh, figurative speech, like draw a conclusion, um, which you may not think of as figurative speech, but really it is. Uh, those are going to be harder. And oftentimes you'll see grades drop because, well, you just can't seem to comprehend this, you know, this higher level stuff we're doing. Um, now, NLD is a different thing than Asperger's or well, Asperger's is about to go away as a, as a, as a diagnostic uh, category and it's going to be replaced by autism spectrum disorder. Um, and sometimes NLD and um, a and autism spectrum or Asperger's are kind of confused, but they're different. Um, in nonverbal learning dis disability, the, the student with NLD may have poor visual spatial processing, but they do feel emotion, they are desperate for friends, and they're very caring, ultimately. The student with uh, ASD or Asperger's has had early language delays, early cognitive delays. They tend to be very indifferent to peers and indifferent to feelings. They really can't understand how other people feel. Um, and they have very narrow, exclusive interests. They may be very obsessive about, you know, World War II planes or reptiles or something like that. And they um, often have rather strange, you know, idiosyncratic use of speech that seems strange, that's atypical. So it is a really a different, um, it's a different, uh, 
uh, Connie syndrome. Could any of those overlap at all? Or not? Probably not. I mean, you know, if you're caring and um, and feel emotion, that's something that somebody with uh, Asperger's or um, or autism spectrum can't really do, um, and so on. Unfortunately, like all of these